In this video, I'm going to be showing you Lovable, which is an AI full stack application builder. Now, one thing that really pulled me towards it, though, is its ability to integrate directly with Supabase, completely with natural language. If you want to set up things like authentication or be able to integrate tables to be able to manage all of your different data, I'm going to show you how you can get started. What I'm going to demonstrate in this video is building out a course platform. I want to build out a course platform similar to Udemy or Coursera for my brand developers digest. The brand colors are black, purple, and blue. So we'll go ahead and we'll submit that. And while that is running through, you can make a free account on Supabase. And I'm just going to make a new project name. I'm going to call this one lovable. And I'll make a password for this and I'll create a new project here. This is just going to take a couple minutes to spin up here. We see it's initializing the project and we'll go back to Lovable. Here we see I'll help you build out a beautiful course platform for Developers Digest. Let me outline the vision as well as the initial features we'll implement. Here we see it working through some of the base styles within Tailwind. We have a course card TSX component. We have the index.tsx that it's updating. We have some featured courses that are hard coded within here. The goal by the end of this, we'll try and swap out all of those hard coded values for what we ultimately have within the database here. Here we go. We can browse the different categories, become an instructor. Now, one notable thing here is there is no navigation. I'm going to say create a navigation and a footer and remove the prices from the courses. I'm not going to be integrating anything like Stripe or anything like that within this video. I'm just going to show you the integration with Supabase and get the authentication set up and all of the pieces to actually have the data live within Supabase rather than being hard coded. Here we see it's creating the navigation, it's creating the footer, and you can also see it streaming in if you'd like. So one thing with the platform, and it is a little bit different, is this is hidden by default, unless you, of course, click it. But what I've found is it actually does give pretty good results most of the time. There are errors from time to time, but for the most part, it does pretty good. Here we go. It's refreshing. We have our navigation bar, browse courses. It removed the prices just like I asked for. And we also have this footer on the bottom. All right. Now I'm going to say, let's make the sign in button work with Supabase. To set up Supabase within a project, you can just go and click Supabase. Now, if it's the first time that you're authentic, you just have to give permissions to the organization that you want it to access. In this case, I'm going to go and click Lovable, which is the project in Supabase that you just saw me set up a couple minutes ago. Now we see it's connecting to the Supabase project and it's going to gather the database structure, tables, and security settings. It will just take a moment. It looks like we haven't created any tables in the Supabase project yet. Now you're connected to Supabase. You can set up user accounts, login, store and use real-time data and advanced features like edge functions. Now that we're connected to Supabase, let's go ahead and run this. Let's make the sign in button work with Supabase. Now, the nice thing with Supabase, if you haven't used it before, they have a really great SDK across a number of different languages, and they also have some nice React components as well that work similar to something like Clerp, where you can have these components that you can edit and tweak and sort of configure to your heart's content on whatever you'd like them to look like. But overall, it has a lot of the minutiae sort of figured out of the forget of creating an account, logging in an account, all of the email is all set up. You can set up your SMTP settings also within Supabase very easily. You can use something like AWS or whatever that you like for emails. All right, so with the update that it made, it looks like it's trying to directly route to the login page if a user is not logged in. So I'm going to say instead of routing directly to the login page, if a user is not logged in, show the home page and only have the auth component within the page once a user clicks to sign in and we'll submit that. 
The other thing that I do quite like with this as well is there's also some really great keyboard shortcuts that you can see here. I can just click escape if I want to leave that view. That's something that I always appreciate is if you do have keyboard shortcuts within the application. Now we have our authentication component. We see that there was build unsuccessful. So here we see that there's a number of properties that it didn't recognize. Now this is the other cool thing. So you can just click F and it will try and attempt to solve that error for us. Let's go back there. Now what was interesting is right before we got the error message, this actually looked a bit better, right? We'll see what it thinks the error is. We'll help fix the TypeScript error in the login component by correctly typing the auth components appearance props. We saw a little error flash there. We see build unsuccessful. Let's go and we'll try and fix this again. It does look potentially like it's just a syntax error. I see the issue now. It looks like there are some extra markdown backticks at the end of the code snippet that's causing the build errors. I'll remove those and clean up the code. It's fixing the syntax and there we go. The other thing to note with this is on Superbase, if you do want to use single sign-on, you will have to set those up. So that's something that Lovable isn't going to be able to do for you. So you can go ahead and enable or disable whichever ones that you do and don't want. And there's also some really great documentation on how to set up these as well. Now let's go back here. I'm going to go ahead and sign up. Let's create an account here. One thing to note with authentication is they recommend to turn off the confirmation emails from Superbase. And the reason for that is Superbase will try and send an access token. And that access token is going to route to a particular domain. And with Lovable, the way that this works is you have this subdomain on their Lovable app. And Superbase doesn't have the context of what this is. You can always set this up after the fact, but that's outside of the scope of this video, at least. Let's go ahead and make a user account here. We're going to sign up for the first time on Superbase. And now if I go back to our Superbase account and I go over to authentication, we see now we have our email here. That is all set up. What I'm going to say now is if a user is signed in, show them dashboard of the current courses they are working on. I'll submit that. And the idea is we'll just have a different view for when users are actually authenticated and within their own system. Now, the other cool thing with this is you can actually run your SQL directly from Lovable here. Now, it won't run automatically, which I do really like because when you're running migrations and stuff like that, anytime you're touching the database, you do, generally speaking, want to be pretty careful, right? So encourage branching and stuff like that when you are using this in more of a higher stakes application than what I'm demonstrating here. Just always be careful with these things. I'm going to go ahead and apply the migration and then we see, all right, the migration has been applied successfully. So now we go back over to Superbase here. If you click database, they have this great schema visualizer here. So we see user courses and the courses, and then we have the courses there and the user ID. And if we go over to the table editor, we have the courses table as well as the user courses as well. In addition to the migration, now it also set up that dashboard UI. If I click browse courses, it doesn't do anything quite yet, but I can say I want to add in a browse courses page. And then I want to have a page where it will show a YouTube embed video as well as a playlist for each course. Let's break this down into steps. First, let's create the browse courses page, and then we'll create the course details page with the video content. Let's just see what it's doing here. Browse courses within here. We see the course cards. We have the courses that it will list out. And within here, we have the course details, and this is going to be where it's going to get that request from Superbase and then handle the enroll process and quite a bit that it's working through here. It's really working through faster than you can even read. Here we see it's created two new pages, a browse courses page, as well as a course details page that shows a YouTube embed, as well as a playlist of lessons. We see build unsuccessful. Let's try and fix this. Now, the great thing with this is it's really just one button away, right? You just click F, it's going to pass in that error. 
One thing with this is even though there are errors, now there's going to be errors on all of these platforms, whether you're using cursor or windsurf or basically anything, you're going to get errors, but it is really ergonomic to just be able to press one button, hit pass in the context of the error from the terminal and attempt to solve the issue. Now I'm going to again, try and browse courses here. We see the build was unsuccessful again. We can click F. Now that's done. Let's go and look at all the courses here. This video is brought to you by Scrimba, the innovative coding platform that brings interactive learning to life. Dive into a variety of courses from AI engineering to front end, Python, UI design, and much more. Scrimba's game changing feature is their unique Scrim screencast format, which lets you pause the lesson anytime and start directly editing the teacher's code. Their curriculum is built in collaboration with industry leaders, including Mozilla MDN, Hugging Face, and Langchain, and includes building application with OpenAI's Claude, Mistral models, and guides you on deploying projects to platforms like Cloudflare. While AI tools can assist with coding, a solid grasp of the fundamentals is essential for achieving real experience. Scrimba offers something for everyone from complete beginners to advanced developers, and about 80% of Scrimba's content is completely free. Sign up for a free account today using my link below and enjoy an extra 20% discount on their pro plans when you're ready to upgrade. I'm sure you'll love it. Here we have our browse courses page. We have the advanced JavaScript, for instance. We have this great Rick Astley video that it generated for us. And then we have our course playlist there. We can click enroll, successfully enrolled within the course. We have our playlist here that we can click through. Now, if we go back to Subabase, when we did click enroll there, we see our user courses here and we have the ID as well as the course ID on what courses they have enrolled in. Now as a user, if you go back to the main dashboard there, this is the course that you're enrolled in. If I go and I enroll in this class and I go back to our main dashboard there, now we're enrolled in two different courses, right? Now within these courses, I want a new table that has all of the details to the course content. There will be videos, markdown, and each course can have a mixed variety of the two. I also want to remove the hard-coded elements on the courses page. We'll submit that. Within this query, it's a bit more complex. We're asking for it to create a table that doesn't exist. We're asking for it to update our database as well as update the UI portion of our application. Here again, the migration has run successfully. We go over to Subabase again. We can now see we have our user courses, course content, as well as the courses themselves. Now let's update the course detail page to use the new course content table instead of hard coded content. All right. So the course details pages now fetches and displays the actual course content. We see introduction to course overview. And again, if I go back to our database here and we go over to our course content, so we see course overview as well as introduction to course. If I change that, let's put in an exclamation mark, for instance, and I'll go back here. Now we see that exclamation mark, right? So we have it for this course. Now there are just a couple things within our database. So I'm going to say add within our database, the react and redux master class and the Python course, see that with some data material for each course. I'll go in, I'll submit that. But setting up a relatively complicated SQL query for us to run, like it's setting up all of this seed information for us, it's going to insert all of this information for us. Now the migrations run really quick uh, once they're generated. The other nice thing too, is if you do have a relatively complicated SQL query, like we had here, is if it does fail, you can also just press that F button for fix. And it will go ahead and it will make an attempt again. I understand the issue. There we go. It's going to attempt again. Once it finishes, we can go and try and apply the changes here. The migration has been applied. I don't mind that at all. Like 
these large language models, they're not deterministic, right? There's going to make errors. It's all based on probability more and more over time. These things are going to get better and better, but there's going to be a margin where things are just going to go wrong. There could just be a, a comma in the wrong place or a syntax error. Like it's very easy for these things to potentially happen sometimes. Now within our course content, there we go. So now we have an actual Traversy Media React crash course here. We can enroll in that. We have the ability to do some reading and videos. We also have what actually looks like a markdown renderer as well. The next step would be actually setting up the content to have it rendered dynamically for what you have clicked on. You could also potentially move it. Now, that's pretty much it in terms of the build that I'm going to show you. Very impressive, right? What you can build with this. Now, the other nice thing with this is you can also just click GitHub to make a GitHub repository. It's as easy as a couple clicks. It will make that repo for us. Once you push a change to this that you've created on GitHub, and it's going to default to private when you publish it, from what I understand, it will actually pull in this context from GitHub into your project. So you can revisit it within Lovable as well, which is really great. And from what I understand, I think it can go up to a hundred thousand lines worth of code within the repository that you can go back and hop within Lovable and make some tweaks. Overall, that's pretty much it for this video. You can check out the history here. Within 12 prompts, we were able to build out this platform. Now, mind you, there's still a lot of UI work that obviously we'd want to put in before we actually push anything like this live, but you can also even publish this within the platform as well. There's a ton within here. I think lovable definitely deserves some pun intended love. Go sign up for an account, try this out for yourself. L let me know your thoughts about lovable. How does it compare to bolt.new V zero, all of these different code platforms. Do you like using these types of things versus using an IDE like Cursor or Windsurf or GitHub Copilot or what have you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But otherwise, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.